Welcome and a wonderful morning to the one of the most important questions. Why the heck do I need sentence embedding? Let me start off by an article by MIT Tech Review. And they published on May 14, 2021 here, language models could hold a new type of search engine. A new idea from Google researchers. And you know Google. In the last 20 years, more or less, it was the same methodology. You scan the web pages, you rank it, you retrieve it, you have some index. But now what I want to do is you ask Google a question and you do not get results and documents in return, but you got the answer to your question in return and not the document where you have to go and query the document yourself to find the information you're looking for. And the way to do it is simply to take, more or less in simple terms, the whole web, read it, apply a language model to it, train a model on it, and we have here a language model like BERT or GPT-3, or future versions of them, of course. And the model is trained by all the web pages that are available. And then when you ask this, the, the, your query to the system, you will get a definite answer. And I think it will be based on sentence embedding or paragraph embedding or whatever technology you want to call it. And yeah, the idea is to beha behave like a human expert. And of course it is that if you have all document sources of the net, you can have conflicting sources. You can have a source A or a source B, and they say, well, this is true, and the other one says, no, exactly the opposite is true. So the idea here is that you have to keep track of the sources, and the system has to learn where it learned a single particular kind of information of knowledge from. Was it a document, let's say, by CNN? Or was it a report by Fox News? And you understand the dichotomy that's uh, going on here and maybe the polarization this new system will have. But the idea is you got an information and not a list of documents that might contain the information. And to be clear, oops, I have to go back. Just a second. If you explore this and now i lost one of my documents heaven's sake how can i lose one of my documents well anyway you know what sentence embedding is i showed you the code for sentence embedding in my last 10 videos so you can go back and check it but if you're really interested in the current state and the way i do research on sentence embedding is here a beautiful web page called paperswithcode.com and if you look here for sentence embeddings you see here that you have 53 papers with code. And if you go here at the list of the papers and you rank them by stars, you see that starting 2017, you have quite a lot of publications on sentence embeddings. And what I want to look with you together is here, April 2021. Transformer-based sequential denoising auto-encoder for unsupervised sentence embedding learning. Unsupervised sentence embedding learning. And what we do is you can go in and have a look at the task this model is designed for. Information retrieval, paraphrase identification, semantic textual similarity. And of course, it uses sentence embeddings, uh, sentence embedding and sentence embeddings, plural, of course, re-ranking. The code here uh, is the code that I used in my videos that I already showed you that we went through together. But if you're interested in the PDF uh, here, uh, you can get a general idea why they started to do this, what is the problem with this feature space or with the sentence embedding space of BERT, how you apply a sentence embedding directly, what are the problems within the uh, anisotropic um, asymmetry of the embedding space. You have different ideas to come by these problems. One of the ideas, where is it, about flow. But there's now, this is from November 2020. But they propose a new approach 
FPS day, and this outperforms the previous best methods. And if you have a look at the chart, you can see here that the green line, for example, is this new methodology from April 2021, and that it outperforms more or less other algorithms that maybe you are familiar with. The nice thing about this is that it gives you also a short summary about the semantic textual similarity, the problems you encounter with it, the methodology you have for ranking it, for training it. So I really recommend you have a look at this document. And if you want to say, hey, can I have a short one page view on why sentence embedding are so important? Well, this is the one sheet. AgriDot is a project, a research project that will come to an end starting 2015, 2017, but now in 2021, more than 1,100 projects will come to an end, will deliver a final result. And this is, for example, where the European researcher, the European Union, R&D, this is where they have focused their research in the last year. And where we'll get, we will get a result in 2021. You can take these documents, you take every sentence of every, of every project, of every paragraph, you embed this sentence with a sentence transformer, with sentence embedding, you get a huge amount of data, you reduce the dimensionality of the space, you start to cluster the point clouds in this artificial topological space, you can apply different similarity mechanisms, but what you come up with when you have sentence embedding, you have a beautiful distinction and a beautiful separation, unfortunately, of the current separation between the topics. And you have research projects about the labor market, methodologies, examination, about the financial market, what new instruments could be applied. You have research on political science, what should they take into account? How to network, how to whatever. And then, and then you have here, and it's a beautiful presentation because I've chosen here, if you see from all my clusters I have here, these are three, five, six, seven, eight, nine clusters. Three here and the rest here. And you see, here's the problem about the ice sheet, the research about the, the retrieving ice sheet, the research about terrestrial biosphere, but climate change, and you see that here, they are heavily interlinked. And then from climate change, weather, and then the biosphere, and then cell and genome research. And now you see how close this is together, how interrelated this interdisciplinary R&D is. And then you see here, the money, the labor market, uh, the models, how we work, when we work, payment, investment, political priorities, and you see how far they are still separated in the research that will end 2021. And we will have a look at the research starting 2021, going on for the next three, four years. And sentence embedding will be a methodology giving us the power to analyze if this picture changed, if we will have an interlink between the financial market, between the future financial investments, or the ideas in political science, how they directly can influence and will influence, and if there's a model to interlink those still separated spheres of R&D currently performed in the year 2021. And this is the reason why I use the, search, the new search methodology of sentence embedding. Thank you.